Hi, I'm Jess Windermillen and I'm the author of Asha and the Spirit Bird and Tamarind and the Star of Ishtar. Welcome to the Reading Zone Book Club. So lovely to see you all. I was born close to the Himalaya on a farm where I lived with my mum and dad, my cousins, my Margie and my brother. And one of the really fun things about living in India was that we had a wild monkey called Omar who sort of adopted our family. Can you imagine having an actual monkey to play with you? When I was one and a half, my family moved to Nottingham and that's where I grew up. And even though I was too little to actually remember what it was like in India, when we had big family dinners, we used to tell stories. And one of the stories that I used to love hearing was the one about our dear Omar. Apparently, she used to take my brother, who was a baby at the time, and run off with him up to the neem tree and stay there rocking him. And however much we tried, she wouldn't come down. So my first book, Asher and the Spirit Bird, was inspired by my Margie, my grandma. We were really close and when I was growing up, she was the one who made me feel really special. She used to tell me lots of stories and lots of things about what India was like when she was a little girl. One of the things that she always told me was that she believed that when people died, their spirits didn't disappear but they were born in, inside the body of an animal. I thought this was amazing. And she also told me that I shouldn't worry because she would always stay close to me, even when she died. So when I was thinking of my first book, Asher and the Spirit Bird, I wanted it to have three things in it. One, I wanted to set it in India. Two, I wanted it to have magic in it. And three, I wanted my main character to have a special spirit animal that would guide and help her if she ever needed it. So, in this story, Asha lives in the foothills of the Himalaya and she has to go on a super dangerous quest through the mountains in search of her missing papa. And throughout the journey, she's guided by the spirit of her nanny in the form of a Lamagaya, a Himalayan bird of prey. When I was growing up, I used to read a lot and I loved stories that had magic in them, like The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. So when I began to write my own stories, I loved to put magic in them. Tamarind and the Star of Ishtar, my second book, is also a magical story about 11-year-old Tamarind who travels from Bristol to her grand family home in the Himalaya for the first time. Once there, she begins to uncover the secrets surrounding her mother's death when Tamarind was a baby. She discovers a magical garden and a mysterious mountain girl and her monkey Hanu. When her annoying cousin Sophia goes missing during an incredibly dangerous monsoon storm, it's Tamarind who tries to save her from wild Himalayan wolves. And it's Tamarind who heals the long family feud. In this story, I wanted to write about belonging and identity when, like myself, you grow up with feet in two cultures. Tamarind has never been to India before. And at the start of the story, she's really cross with her dad. He's just got married and she's not very happy about that. And up to now, he's never told her anything about her mum. And now he's leaving her with her mum's family and going off on a honeymoon. I'm going to read a bit of the story for you. It's about a third of the way through and it's one of my favourite sections. It's the first time Tamarind finds the magical garden with help from the monkey Hanu. She's just discovered an emerald ring which belonged to her mum and her cousin Sophia has snatched it away and Tamarind is really angry and upset. Here we go. Hope you enjoy it. I feel a tugging on my sleeve and when I look down there's a tiny hand wrapped around my fingers. Hello again. 
I let out the tight breath at last. I thought I'd lost you. He seems tired and slowly pulls me along through the thinning mist, making high-pitched chattering noises. When I glance down, I see the arc of impossible gold dust as he flicks his tail through the night air. I let the monkey lead me further into the undergrowth, further into the unknown. Black shadowy tree limbs appear on either side, spreading their branches low. The monkey and I walk hand in hand through the milky darkness, where a white owl crosses our path, shuddering its wings, making my heart rap harder. I'm glad you're here, I tell him, clutching his hand more tightly. But where are you taking me? And are we even in the garden anymore? He gives me a little monkey grin and squeezes my hand back. The sky above us brightens and a full moon spreads jagged shadows across the snow-capped mountains in the distance. There, in front of me, lit up by moonbeams, is a crumbling stone archway smothered in spiralling plants, the entrance to a neglected part of the garden. On top of the arch is a worn statue of a majestic-looking woman standing tall with vast wings behind her. To either side sit two stone owls. Her feet are talons and she rests them lightly on two lions who lie beneath her. One hand is raised as if she's beckoning me forward. Suddenly the monkey chatters and disappears into the trees. Sweat beads across my forehead. Where am I? I need to turn back. This is stupid. I can't even see the house anymore. There are wolves out here. Maybe other things too. An icy wind lifts the leaves gathered at the foot of the archway, swirls them until they lift off the ground and rise to the top, falling through the air like dark snow. An echoing giggle from behind me makes me jump and I hear the tune I heard when I arrived. But the humming, lilting voice is closer this time, closer and closer. Setting is really important in my stories and it's almost like a character in its own right. In Tamarind, I wanted to create a magical, almost mythological place where she could find a missing mum. And so I imagined a Lakapuri, Tamarind's grand ancestral home in the Himalaya, where all the mystery surrounding her mother's death is uncovered. I'm going to set you a little challenge. When I started to think about the setting for Tamarind, I drew myself a map. And here it is. So there's a few maps that I'm going to show you. So this is the very first map. And you can see that it's very rough, and this is a very, very first one that I did. And then I made a neater map. And this is my neater map. And this has got um, the house, La Kapuri, on it. It's got the gardens, so there are some really kind of pretty formal gardens that surround the house. And then there's the wild bit of the garden. I put the hut on and the statue of Ishtar that is kind of on the stone arch. And I put in the, um, there's a, a hole in the hedge and then you can see all the, the mountains kind of around the garden. So that's how I kind of started off. And actually then that map was changed to um, there's a map in the front of the book and this is done by an artist and this was the map in front of the actual book. So what I'd like you to do is think about um, a setting, a story setting and I'd like you to draw your own map for your story and it can be as wild as you like, a real place or a completely imagined place or a mix of the two. Once you've imagined um, what you're going to draw, you get ahead and, and draw it, and then you can keep adding things to it as you get new ideas. 
and put anything that you want in there, be as intricate as you like. And then once you've kind of got your setting map done, you can start to add your characters in as well. So will it be an island? Will you draw an icy landscape? An old creepy house? It's up to you. Good luck with that. And if you decide to read Tamarind and Starvishta, I hope you have fun exploring the Himalaya and finding out all about the wild magical garden and discovering the secrets it holds along with Tamarind. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, there's hope and magic all around and don't forget to look out for it. Bye.